Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman history. Constantine VI was the last generation of the Isaurian dynasty to hold power in the Eastern Roman Empire. When his father died on the 8th of September 780, Constantine became emperor, but was ruled by a regency headed by his mother, Irene Sarantipakina, because he was still a boy. For the first 10 years of his reign, Irene was effectively the ruler of the empire. The first major threat to Irene and her son was by his uncles, the half-brothers of Leo IV. Within 40 days of Constantine's ascension as senior emperor, Caesar Nicephorus was discovered plotting against them with the domestic of the Excubators, the Logotheti of the Dromon, the Strategos of the Armeniacon, and the Drungarius of the Kibereots, amongst others. Irene forced all of these uncles to take holy vows to disqualify them from the throne and secular life. Their fellow conspirators were exiled. Irene placed trusted eunuchs in key positions after the Nicophoran conspiracy. The most important was the appointment of Starachios the eunuch as Logotheti of the Dromon, the empire's foreign minister. John the Sacalarius became Domesticos of the Scoli, and Theodore the Patrician was promoted. In addition to these three eunuchs, new men were assigned as Domesticos of the Excubitors, Strategos of the Armeniacon, and Drungarius of the Kipereas. Therefore, by the end of the year, Irene had secured her son's position. Irene needed to salvage her own reputation, for she had had a quarrel with her husband only a few months before his death and likely fabricated the story of him falling ill from placing the votive crown of Morris in St. Sophia on his head. Since Leo was an iconoclast, it would be easy to write him off as an evil iconoclast. Irene restored the votive crown he had taken to St. Sophia, now with additional pearls. In June 781, John the Sacalarios was appointed as Monostrategos of the Anatolian Strategia. He assigned all forces to guard the Taurus Mountains, anticipating an Arab attack. At the Battle of Melon, John was victorious against a large Arab force led by Abd al-Kabir. The Eastern Roman Empire, despite the loss of Ravenna, still possessed important strongholds in Sicily, Sardinia, and enclaves in Italy. There was nothing that could be done about the growing Frankish presence in northern Italy, but the empire's southern and maritime territories could still be defended. There was still hostility between the Pope and the Emperor, dating from the Council of Hyrea under Constantine V, for which the Popes stopped treating the Eastern Roman Emperor as their sovereign. In 781, when the Frankish king visited Rome, Irene abandoned Constantine V's standoffish Italian policy and sought an alliance with him. Emperor Constantine VI was betrothed to Rotrid, Charlemagne's daughter. However, the Strategos of Sicily, Elpidius, rebelled, proclaiming Caesar Nicephorus and his brothers as emperor. Irene immediately responded by sending an expeditionary force, led by Theodore the Patrician to Sicily, who was victorious and crushed the revolt. Theodore became Strategos, and Elasios, a Roman official, was sent to instruct Rotrid in Greek. It was a rather special betrothal, since it was the first time Westerners were marrying into the imperial family. The betrothal was an immediate success, as anti-Byzantine hostility dissipated, but the papacy continued to drift into the cultural orbit of the Frankish kingdom, rather than the Eastern Roman Empire, with Pope Leo III replacing the commemoration of the emperor with Charlemagne. Additionally, Pope Hadrian replaced silver coins minted in Rome with the Pope's portrait instead of the Emperor's. In 782, Harun al-Rashid invaded the Empire with a force of 95,793 men in a three-pronged attack. He sacked Nacolea and pillaged his way to Chrysopolis. Meanwhile, 30,000 men were assigned to pillage Anatolia. Michael the Canodracon led his strategia against the breakaway Arab force and at the Battle of Daranos was victorious, slaughtering half the enemy force. Styrakios trapped the Arabs in the Sangarius Valley, but decided to negotiate. Tatzatios, the strategos of Bucalerion, 
defected to the Arabs and captured the three Roman commanders, Antonius, Acanodracon, and Storachios. Irene sued for peace and had to pay a tribute of 160,000 nomismata, but was handed back Nacolea. Irene then sacked many of her strategoi, including Michael Lacanodracon, and replaced them with loyal commanders. Ever since the late 6th century, most of the Balkans had been conquered and settled by Slavic tribes called Sklavonia. Small pockets of Roman territory were held around key positions such as Thessalonica, Athens, Dyrrhachium, and the Dalmatian coastline. Under Constantine V, Serious efforts were taken to recapture Thrace and resettle it with Roman citizens, while settling Slavs in Anatolia. However, most of mainland Greece remained a Slavonic sea outside of imperial control. Irene, being from the prominent Athenian family of the Sarandapekes, expended considerable resources on Thrace, Macedonia, and Greece. In 783, she entrusted her chief minister, Storachios, with command of an expeditionary force. First, he headed north and drove out the Bulgars raiding Thrace. Then, he marched to Thessalonica and fought his way through Greece to the Peloponnese. He was victorious against large numbers of Slavs and came away with lots of booty and prisoners. Theophanes, by now contemporary, says, He went to Thessalonica and Greece subjected them all, and made them tributary to the empire. He also entered the Peloponnese, took many prisoners and much booty, and brought it to the Roman Empire. This first step in the reconquest of Greece was celebrated in Constantinople with a triumph. Aside from the material gain, Storachios had secured Thrace, the remaining Balkan territories, and cleared the routes to these possessions. Many Sclavonia were seemingly subjugated, at least nominally, that Nikephorus I could reconquer and repopulate Greece 20 years later implies that the victories affected in this expedition had long-lasting consequences and pummeled many Sclavonia into at least nominal submission. In 784, Irene and Constantine VI personally taught the reconquered regions in Thrace. This grand affair was accompanied by musicians, courtiers, and the army, in essence a state visit to the provinces. The empress and emperor reached Beroia, and following Irene's orders, founded a new city at the site called Irenopolis. They then proceeded to Philippopolis and returned to Constantinople via Anchialos. The result of these activities was that the number of bishoprics increased, most of which had previously been abandoned to the Slavonic tribes. These include Thracian Heraclea, Zuleron, Chiarupolis, Hexamillion, Delvatus, Bulgarophygon, Trizon, Portmus, Orios, and Pamphylon. These same bishops were also able to start proselytizing and converting the Slavs in Greece from paganism to Christianity. At some point before her deposition, Irene also promoted Athens to an archbishopric in addition to Corinth and Thessalonica. Furthermore, she appointed her family to local positions of importance in the Strategus of Hellas. In 784, Patriarch Paul fell ill, but started organising a church council with Irene. She appointed the protosecretus Tarasios as his patriarchal successor. In 785, Empress Irene and Patriarch Tarasios began preparations for a large church council and invited the Pope in Rome and the other patriarchs. Then Irene stopped paying tribute to the Abbasid Caliphate. The Arabs started raiding the frontier again and prevented the patriarchs of Antioch and Jerusalem and the Pope of Alexandria from sending their legates to Constantinople. In the following winter, Nikephoros, the strategos of Armenia Con, discovered the walls of Adata, the Arab base of operations, had been damaged by flooding and attacked, sacking the city. Later in 786, Irene and Constantine accompanied another expedition into Thrace, further subduing the Slavs. Buoyed by victory, the Empress and Constantine returned to Constantinople to convene the Ecumenical Council. 
When the council began, disaffected Tagmata soldiers assembled around the tomb of Constantine V and demanded the council be stopped. Irene had to acquiesce. Later that year, Irene sent the Tagmata on campaign against the Arabs. Once they left, Starachios and the army of Thrace marched into Constantinople. Irene then sent an order to the Tagmata, advancing across Anatolia, that 1,500 of them were to be immediately discharged for their recent riot. To Irene's credit, the Tagmata did not dispute this act. In 787, Irene reconvened the council, moving it to Nicaea instead of Constantinople. The iconoclast Council of Hyrea was overturned and condemned. Moreover, using scripture, the council approved icon veneration. The first iconoclasm was over. Upon their return to Constantinople, Irene and Constantine VI were hailed as a new Constantine and Helena. There was no iconoclast backlash, and the movement was seemingly subdued. There were many good reasons to eliminate iconoclasm. Iconophilism was strong amongst the court and bureaucracy, as well as being very popular among women. Politically, it ended religious hostility from the West, and especially the Pope, who had condemned all of the iconoclast emperors, and had since 774 stopped dating the year by the emperor. Recent victories by Irene also showed that icons were not causing the wrath of God. Irene asked Charlemagne to send Rotrud eastward, since Constantine VI was now 16 years old and Rotrud was 13. But famously, Charlemagne was too fond of his daughters to let them go, and so the marriage fell through. Instead, Irene arranged a bride show for her son, a beauty contest where the emperor would choose a wife from the prettiest and most well-to-do women of the empire. Irene and Storakios chose Maria of Amnia, the granddaughter of an important landowner turned holy man. In 788, an Arab raiding force defeated the Eastern Roman army at the Cilician Gates, and the Bulgars ambushed an army as it campaigned in the Strymon Valley. Irene had also sent an expeditionary force to conquer Benevento, but the Lombards and Franks similarly ambushed and destroyed them too. Irene subsequently created the Strategus of Macedonia, dividing the army of Thrace into two armies and formed an alliance with Benevento. This triple defeat damaged Irene's reputation. In 790, Constantine VI thought his mother was being manipulated by Storakios and plotted to remove him, but the eunuch discovered the emperor's plot and Irene responded by placing Constantine under house arrest. Irene then forced the army to swear allegiance to her and keep Constantine from power so long as she lived. However, the soldiers of the Armenia Con refused to take the oath. Irene sent the Drungaris of the Watch, Alexios Musel, to placate them, but they expelled their commander, Nikephorus the Sacker of Adata, and proclaimed Alexios as their new strategos. They then proclaimed an end to Irene's regency and in effect, a takeover of power. The strategoi of Anatolikon, Phryxion, and Opsikion were also removed by their subordinates and joined the Armeniacon. Irene surrendered and released Constantine. The 19-year-old emperor exiled Storakios and placed his mother under house arrest. The regency of Irene was finally over. The 10-year-long regency of Irene had generally proved to be very successful. The back and forth between the Arabs and Eastern Romans continued. The reality of the situation in Italy had to be come to terms with. The failed expedition in 788 meant Italy remained a far-flung province, but the rapprochement with the West helped to improve previously hostile relations. The main area of success under Irene's regency was the significant conquests made in Thrace and the pacification of mainland Greece, which would lead to the reintegration of these provinces. She had also been extremely successful at maintaining her son's position on the throne and her own power despite several plots and rebellions, including her son's. Add to that the Second Council of Nicaea, 
and you have an empress regent who could push the limits of her regency, and even consider taking power for herself. Ultimately, her regency had to end, and, fortunately, it finished without bloodshed. Thank you very much for watching, and this has been Eastern Roman History.